Kia ora, good evening. For the first time, one of this country's worst killers has opened up about his horrific crime. Raymond Ratama killed seven people in 1992. He's due for a parole hearing next week, a hearing One News wanted to attend. That request prompted Ratama to write exclusively to our reporter, Simon Bradwell. And Simon joins us now live. Good evening, Simon. Good evening. Yes, for 19 years, Raymond Ratama has been a closed book. That's simply because he's never been interviewed by a journalist. Now, a couple of months ago, I sat right here and I wrote to Raymond Ratama. I wasn't sure what I'd get back. To be honest, I wasn't sure I'd get anything back. But what I did get was a fascinating glimpse into the mind of a killer. This was the last the world saw of Raymond Ratama, jailed for life for killing seven people, including his three children, in a night of carnage in Masterton in 1992. This playground has replaced the house where Ratama bashed and stabbed his victims. But when police arrived right here 19 years ago, they found the bodies of Ratama's children piled on his wife's bed with a Bible placed on top. Disappearing into prison, Ratama's never spoken of his crime until now. Simon, regretfully, I took the lives of seven Fano members. We'd written to Ratama asking to attend his parole board hearing at Rolleston Prison. This neat handwritten reply, Ratama's first public acknowledgement of his crimes since going to jail. Members of my whānau continue today to suffer mentally, emotionally and physically for their loved ones. I have the utmost aroha, compassion, empathy and respect for them all. Former Winston police officer Malcolm Dunn dealt with a teenage Ratama years before the murders. I was quite taken back, like I said, I was uh, really amazed, eh? Really amazed. The crime still so shocking that Ratama's hearing was delayed for three years for the sake of his victims' families. Twenty years later, we've not had an appropriate context within which to share kōrero or tangi together. Having opened up, Ratama then refused to let us attend the hearing. I do not seek an advocate. I do not seek a balanced representation of my life. I want for my whānau, that of mine and my ex-partners, to heal as best as they can in their lifetimes. Ratama's letter won't have any effect on his parole hearing. The parole board told One News its prime criteria for assessing Ratama for release is whether he presents any risk to the community. Well, I do think that he would be, uh, he could settle back into society again. That's strongly opposed by his victims' families who wouldn't appear on camera. This letter likely to remain Ratama's only release for the foreseeable future. So, Simon, what is the parole process for Raymond Ratama? Well, we know he has his hearing this week. We're not sure exactly what day it is because, of, because he did uh, refuse to let us attend. But the hearing will be sometime this week. The parole board won't keep him waiting. I understand that he'll probably get the decision a week or so after that. And while they judge every case on its merits, you'd have to think it's going to be another Christmas in jail for Raymond Ratama. Simon Bradwell, thank you.